Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu, in Astainu, in Astaufiruhu. When I would be lahi min shuluri of Fusina, min Sayati Amalina. May ya di hilla who fella modilla, or may you lil who fella hadila. Why shadu la ilaha illa la wahdahu la sharikala. Why shadu enna Mohammedan Abduhu or Sulu, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutun illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a full submission to Allah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa may yut'illah wa rasuluhu faqad faza fawzan azima O oh, you who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and say that which is right and speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. <laughs> I pray that may Allah open my chest and make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, it's a blessing to be here with you all again on another blessed Juma. I pray that this Juma finds you and your loved ones well, uh, better than the Juma before it. Uh, and I keep in prayer as well those who may not be here at this Juma whom we may have had with us last week. Uh, this the topic I wanted to touch upon briefly here would be on the topic of connection within Islam. Our Deen is one that, as we know, is is very vibrant, is very robust, is very rich within uh, its foundations, within its rituals, within uh, all of the different pillars that uh, that make it unique in in essence um, from all that which is around us. But one aspect that I think oftentimes it gets lost uh, upon us, especially those of us who may have grown uh, up in the faith, um, those of us who may uh, adhere to it in different ways, the aspect of be of connectedness and this connectedness being not just with those who are present amongst us, not just with those who are our family members or those who are our community members, but this connectedness that really transcends space and time, a connectedness that is to the ancestors, the people who uh, paved this path, who set the ground for the faith, who've uh, put everything you know on uh, in, in in the way of allowing this faith to progress, to allow. Uh, for Islam to be able to boon and then to be able to experience the growth and the state that we are in at the moment, as well as those who come after us, those who are the inheritors, those uh, who will continue to carry the torch. And thinking about what does that offer us? What does that mean for us in such a time as this that we live in, in such a place and space as this as we are in? So just thinking about uh, one of the aspects that when we feel right now with global events kind of being as they are, you know, when, when uh, we see different genocides happening, we see different oppressions, different things like that going on, it's it's one thing to be able to uh, recognize and feel the pain and 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 be, you know, ha have sympathy and, and, and be upset at the circumstance because of the fact that it's, you know, a human atrocity, it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a wrong, it's something that uh, hurts us just in our humanity, but it's also something that uh, should give us a little bit of something to take heed of that we don't become apathetic because of the fact that beyond the degree of humanity, beyond the basic human connection, our Islam, our deen reminds us that we have an additional degree of connection, uh, especially with those whom we share our faith with. We may never have met them. We might not know their name. We might not even speak the same language as them. But there's an inherent degree of connectedness that our faith offers us that makes us feel 
these different impacts, these different losses, uh, the different triumphs in a way that may not be the same way in terms of somebody who has no other connection beyond just the fact that it's just a human connection. And it's very interesting that we are in a deen that you could be in one corner of the earth in a, a nation like Japan. And if you want to go to another corner of the earth, to a place that speaks no, you know, has as no different, uh, you know, similarities in terms of culturally, in terms of language or whatever it might be. It might be in a corner of Japan to the corner of the U.S. or it may be in a corner of uh, Zimbabwe to the corner of Europe or wherever it may be that you're able to come to a space and you might not speak the language. You might not be able to connect in different ways. You may have completely different cultural norms and whatnot. But the moment you go into the salah, the moment you go into the masjid, the moment you are about to uh, you know, fulfill one of your primary obligations of prayer, you are able to do so without any discrepancy, without any issue in a sense of being able to pray alongside those who you may never have met before, those who you cannot speak with outside of that particular context, those whom you can barely uh, understand in any other aspect, or you might not even get along with, but because of your foundational connection to the deen of Islam, you're able to at least say that prayer together, you're able to share that space together. And, and it's huge in, in this aspect for us to think about at a time when the Muslim ummah has been as carved up and divided in so many ways, shapes, and forms to think about what is that value that connectedness offers us in a moment when apathy is uh, looming at the door, in the moment which apathy has probably taken control of so many uh, of our thoughts and, and so many of our mindsets in a sense of being like, well, what can we do? What 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 should we do? Or this is just how this is going to be. And then just kind of fall into that uh, line of thinking that our connectedness as Muslims makes us remi remind ourselves that any impact we feel, as our Prophet Sallallahu has taught us, that the believers are as one body. Um, and when one part of that body feels a pain, you know, another part, uh, the, the whole body will feel a pain. Um, that you, you think about uh, this aspect of our uh, connectedness within Islam, our connection in Islam is, is not only that, which keeps us human in these most inhumane times and most inhumane feelings that we might experience. But our connectedness in Islam is one that reminds us that our connection and our uh, togetherness and our benefit that we have for one another is not just limited to this world, but it's something that continues in the hereafter. That we live in a space and a time that we might have many regrets because we didn't get to meet this person. We didn't get to see this person. We didn't get to interact with them. And our deen offers us a space of hope that we may never have met them. We may only have uh, you know, seen somebody on the other side. We only have seen someone uh, on, on the news or may have just read about somebody, but we'd love to have met them. We'd love to have seen them. We'd love to have seen, especially if you read about children that have not been able to live their full lives, that wish they had a chance to live a full life, that we have a deen that offers us a hope that, that that child is able to live a fuller life in a better space to come, but also we can be a part of that uh, if we do our due diligence as well. And so thinking about us not wanting to lose this aspect of connection, not wanting to lose this aspect uh, and not let it be lost upon us of what's the value of us uh, being able to accept and, and to embrace our connection. Thinking about as well, what is like the spiritual significance that within our tradition, our Prophet Sallallahu had, even at the time of his companions, had reminded them that, you know, blessed are those uh, who amongst you who have seen me and believed me and blessed seven times are those who uh, believed me and accepted me, but never saw me. You know, and thinking about how he would praise those who were in his company, but also send prayers and blessings upon those who had yet to be born, those who had yet to come, those who would never see him, but would accept him. Uh, that we know the Prophet ﷺ would spend days and nights within, and, uh, and especially towards his last day, praying for his ummah, praying for not just the ummah around him, because they in and of themselves had a lot and enough issues to have to deal with when the Prophet ﷺ would, would depart, that he was cognizant that this was a nation, this was a community that 
uh, is still very delicate, very fragile, and they have enough issues in and of themselves to, to need a gentle shepherding going forward. But what about those who will come after? What about the people who come going forward? And we may lose it upon ourselves that our Prophet son was praying for us in the future. Our Prophet son was praying for those who come after who may never have met him. But also we may lose it upon ourselves that when we do our prayers, when we do our uh, salah, when we fulfill our basic obligations and we recite the durud or the, uh, the, the salat de Ibrahima, when we do these prayers, we are also sending prayers to the ancestors. We are sending prayers not just to the ancestors, but in our prayers, we are also praying for all of those different Muslims, praying for all of those who are here presently, as well as those who are here to come. Thinking about how we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim in the Majid that we not only pray for the Prophet sallam, not only pray for um, the family of the Prophet sallam, but think about the extended family. Think about the people um, of these of of, of of the Prophet sallam, and thinking about that. What does it mean for us that? Somebody asks us, hey, can you pray for me? We're like, yeah, I'll pray for you. Well, you know, I'm sending you know thoughts and prayers your way. But to think about who are we sending those prayers for? And what does that offer us? What does it give us? What is it, what is it supposed to give us if we are um if we're mindful of what we are actually doing? So when we think about the benefit of prayer in and of itself, just the practice of prayer, we see so many different benefits that that come about it. But think about the words that we are actually reciting. That when we are praying in the Fatiha to guide us to the right path. We're uh, praying to Allah to guide us, guide us to the right path, um, and and think about who is the us. You know, it's not a selfish prayer by any means. That we have portions in it which we are asking for our forgiveness. We are asking for things for ourselves. But thinking about that when we are praying in our prayer, how many times are we actually praying for uh, a more inclusive, more holistic set of individuals than just ourselves? We're praying for ourselves to be guided. We're praying for forgiveness, not just for ourselves, but for our parents, for their parents, for our ancestors, in a sense. We have this inherently built in apparatus of connection for our deen and for our ritual and for our ibadah and for our worship. But is it has it recognized within us that these practices that we do, they're very individual in terms of their own performance, but in their substance, their essence, they're very communal, they're very connected. How does that change how we think about uh, our practice of our, our deen? How does that change how we operate in the world around when we see different atrocities committed, when we see a wrong committed, when we see a right committed, when we see something positive happening? How often do we think about uh, you know, being able to say something like mashallah, or be able to say uh, something positive in that aspect, or be able to think about what's it take for me to just pray for that person, or to think about what does it feel uh, to to empathize with that person. And as a Muslim, we are we remember uh, that just as um, Sayyidina Ali uh, had, had taught us that you know a person is is either your equal in uh, faith or as either your sibling or your brother in faith, or they are your equal in humanity, that we are reminded uh, that we have a tighter connection, a closer connection, especially with those whom we share faith. But it doesn't mean it comes at the expense of those who are our fellow humans, that whether or not they share the faith with us, they're still our equal in humanity. But especially if they are those of us who uh, share within our faith, uh, there's it's it's like you're within a family that you there's certain things that uh, you have maybe a deeper connection deeper bond with that you can connect with your family on that you can relate with your family on that you might not be able to do so with someone who's not in the family but it doesn't mean that you don't treat that the people who are not in your family uh, any less than in terms of like as a human or whatnot you still owe the proper respects you still do all the proper diligence and whatnot to them but at the same time uh, thinking about what are our obligations to our family when we think about uh, slogans like you know family first or you know being you, you've got you've got to uh, you know stick out for your family you got to do all these different things what does that resonate for us you know do we see our fellow muslims do we see our being in islam as something like a family do we see it like as our siblings or whatnot or do we just see them as like oh just those people that are there just those or whatever, whatever wherever they might be from whatever they might be coming from and thinking about what does our 
connectedness as a family? What does our connectedness uh, beyond that degree of that label of Muslims or uh, people within the Islamic faith or anything like that, these over overarching types of labels, what does it mean for us? And especially in a time where, uh, whether you are in the U.S. here or anywhere else, uh, you know, you, you're, you're in a space where it's it's uh, things are becoming inc increasingly more divided, increasingly more uh, polarized, and uh, especially within the U.S. here, Islam is you know maybe two percent population, maybe two three percent, you know maybe even less, probably like one two percent of the population. And thinking about uh, we're we're in a space where um, for so many reasons, shapes, forms that uh, are. Our, uh, our society is being divided for various different topics. There are various different reasons, various different issues. And the last thing that we can afford to happen is even further, as our Muslim community is already experiencing so many other divisions, to experience even further divisions because of a certain political opinion or a certain political view or whatever it may be. But to think about what does our dean talk about in a sense of not just giving um, you know, just just uh, a, a superficial type of, um, you know, satisfaction with respect to giving like, oh, hey, this is just we're just doing uh, a, a, a very superficial service to our, um, you know, our connectedness as Muslims. But what does our dean actually tell us about in moments like this? That what does our connectedness uh, have to offer us um, beyond just like, hey, we're all going to stand lock and step and be firm in our faith and be able to do Muslims against everybody else? No, you know, sometimes being connected as family, as our uh, Quran tells us that you are to stand up for justice, even if it is against yourself, even if it's against your family, even if it's against your parents, you know, we, we are more obligated to correct our family and, and be there for our family and be uh, firm for justice and stand up for what's right and uh, stand against what's wrong, especially with our family, because, you know, things start within the home. This uh, all, all of these different things, in a sense, start right at the home. So we are even more obligated to uh, stand up for these things or stand against for these things if they're happening within our home, within our family. But if we continue to just view uh, especially within our Muslim communities and our Muslim ummah and whatnot, as just other people uh, that whether or not they're Muslim because they don't agree with me on a political issue or whether they, they vote one way or they do another thing that they might, they're not really Muslims or whatnot, uh, we're, we're doing quite a bit of a disservice in this aspect. We're, we're, we're really undermining a key pillar of our faith, a key part of our faith uh, that is in inherently in and of itself one that reminds us that as individual as this experience is, you are uh, nevertheless deeply connected to those who have come before you. You are connected to those who will come after you, who will also be praying for you in this aspect. And you are ultimately connected to all of these individuals, past, present, and future, especially in the life to come. And what will we be able to say to uh, you know, our creator, what we'll be able to say when we are asked about, did we uphold the ties of kinship? When we think about what does it mean to uphold those ties of kinship, to be there for our families, we sometimes will localize it just to our family here. But our deen reminds us that your family is, as a Muslim, much more than just, you know, what, uh, those who you were uh, you know, just born amongst those who are considered your tribe, those who you share a language with, who you share a culture with, who you share a flag with, all of these different things. That's not just your family. Our dean reminds us your family is in of itself uh, anyone who utters the uh, the shahada, utters the declaration, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that those are your family members as well. And when we change how we see at least our fellow Muslims in this aspect, when we change how we view and process versus the kind of post-colonial tribalism that we have that, oh, they're from this nation or they're from that or they're this kind of this kind, um, they're this type of people, this type of people, they speak this, they do that or whatever it might be, um, the, the, the type of jahili type of mindset that our Prophet said will stick with the ummah, this aspect of uh, having a tribal mentality or uh, competing in, in aspects of lineage, thinking about what does uh, being able to peel back from that, what does being able to reframe our own views of each other offer us in this moment, that when we see what's happening in places like Sudan or places like Palestine uh, and, and we see the pain that's happening, we don't respond to it 
like we respond to just something that's like a news item or just like, oh, I guess that happened or just like, all right, like, you know, that that's sad or, you know, you get to this point where uh, there's polarized type of responses, but we're able to share as a family the, the pain that we're seeing and as a family be able to uh, see this issue, see these different issues and these wrongs and these different rights that happen in our world uh, and respond to them. In, in a matter as if it is befitting for family, as if it is befitting uh, a sense of connectedness versus being like, well, that's just another statistic. You know, that's just something that, that's just the fact of life. It, it, it causes us to really interrogate, if this was happening to our immediate family, how would we respond? And thinking about when we see this happening to people across the world, we may not give it that kind of significance because we don't know them that well, or until we meet someone who has a degree of connection or has family over there, it maybe elicits a little bit more response that we're like, oh, we really feel sad about that, we really feel hurt because we know someone who is there. But how do we think about reframing the type of way we see our own connectedness within Islam? And until we reframe that, until we give it the full due appreciation that it's due, we may never be able to fully see what our Prophet had, had, had brought for us, not just in the term of a deen, of a religion that's complete and has its set of practices and all that, but as something that really healed the hearts, something that really healed the fissures that society um, would create, that uh, just the way the world operates, the way that shaitan operates within our world, dividing and conquering the different souls, the different people that are there, that our deen has much to offer in this space. And thinking about what can we uh, what can we benefit from when we start to see uh, not just ourselves, not just uh, our fellow Muslims as people under one label, but start to really think about that these are the folks we've been praying for for so long. These are the folks that we pray for day in, day out. These are the folks that uh, we, we send blessings upon. These are the folks that we, whether we know it or not, ask for guidance for. These are the folks that we are praying to be reunited with, whether we like them or not. Thinking about how do we re envision this? How do we re-envision our aspect and our obligation of connectedness and what we do within our, our deen as connectedness that, uh, that that offers us this aspect of, uh, of, of, of more fulfilled and richer experience, not just in this world, but something that offers us something much more for this time and how we are to show up for this time. It was our Prophet Sallallahu practice to pray for those who had come after him, who would come after him, who would not see him, but believe him, who would be his inheritors and the inheritors of his ummah. But it was also the practice of our Prophet to pray for and to be connected to those who came before him, the, the prophets and their communities who came before him, those who uh, believed and came before him, those who set and blazed the trail came, coming before him, that he didn't disregard the past and just look forward. He didn't just disregard uh, the f uh, the future and just look and reminisce about the past and how good it used to be. He was able to heal and hold both together. Um, and thinking about for us, we come in a line, whether you came into Islam recently, whether you're born into Islam, you are in and of itself still the inheritors of a spiritual tradition, both in the same that goes back 1400 years and before that um, through all the different prophets that came and it gives a deeper sense of connection that you are part you were meant to be where you're meant to be you're meant to accept islam when you accepted islam uh, when you came into the deen but you are still part of that family you are still part a part, a part of that family no less or no better except in aspects of righteousness except in aspects of piety and that's something that humans can't judge that's something that only allah can judge uh, but you are also now someone who's responsible for bearing that torch for those who come ahead. And if we conceptualize our role in this faith, our deen, our aspect, our obligation in this faith is not just one of individuals showing up, getting what's ours, and then we dip and then we're out. Um, but it's something that is much more uh, responsible with respect to what is happening in our world, what happened before, what might be the world that we leave for the people coming after, how can we do the best that we can for this world? So thinking about, inshallah, when we think about our deen, when we think about what does it mean to say I'm a Muslim or I'm Muslim or we're part of the Muslim community, that do we fully appreciate that aspect of being an ummah, of being something that uh, originates from uh, a connectedness from a, 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 a mother, a motherly source, a, a connectedness that 
is, is not seen or not understood maybe in any other type of faith that is there. But what do we have within our aspect here as, as Muslims um, that we can uh, use, that we can appreciate, that can help us navigate this moment and any other challenging moments that come ahead of it? You know, may Allah not enable us to remember the uh, the favors that Allah has given upon us. And first and foremost, that Allah has given us, whether we want it or not, a family beyond our own immediate family. That our Allah has bestowed upon us uh, a, a connection to a family, whether we speak the same language, whether we come from the same place, whether we wave the same flag, or we like the same sports teams of the same nations or whatever it may be from the same cultural practices or not, that we are part and parcel of an extended family. And until we view our admission into this uh, this deen, to this family, as one of a familial connection, as one of a deeper connection, we may never gain the full appreciation uh, for what is, uh, what is meant for this experience, but also we may not truly be able to fully solve the different problems, be able to fully appreciate how to navigate these differences in this life, as well as when it comes time for the next life. And so what will we do on these days that when we see different wrongs happening within our family, when we see different pains that are happening within our family, we see different hurts within our family, it's not just the news of this nation or that nation or this people or that people, but when we view the news and we view these different headlines, we view these different stories, view these experiences as people within our families, how do we then uh, react differently? What does it cause us to do differently? Uh, thinking about that we're in a prophetic tradition where we don't just look back and look at who is just within our, our scope and our people. We don't just look forward and just look at who are those who are just coming from us and going forth from us. But we look holistically at not just who is in, in, in front of us, who's behind us, but who is around us and see that each of these individuals, whether they know it or not, whether we know it or not, but just by the default of us reciting our shahada, we are all part of this family, and we all have an obligation towards each other. And what will we do? What will we say uh, on, that, on that final day, on that last day, when we are called to task about uh, did we uphold those ties of kinship? Will this come to our minds? That did we uphold our ties of kinship to our fellow Muslim brothers, sisters, and siblings that are around. May Allah enable us to recognize this, to be able to do better. May Allah enable us to not be a people who are taken over by apathy, who are taken over by uh, the pre-Islamic uh, jahili types of mindsets of my tribe, my lineage, myself, and 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 just give in to our selfishness. But may Allah enable us to be able to uh, feel and embraced and, and experienced the true fruits of Islam with respect to our community, respect to our connectedness, with respect to our extended family, and seeing what all that uh, this has to offer us beyond just an expanded network of people, but an enhanced human experience that will not just end in this life, but is one that is to continue in the next life. And may Allah enable us to not just leave this Jummah in a better state uh, than we came into it, but allow us to leave every space that we go to and we come out of better than we had entered. May Allah enable us to uh, be reunited, whether in a better, whether in the space that we are here in this life and be able to mend the, uh, the hurt, the pain, the deep uh, disconnectedness and uh, different fissures that we've experienced in this life and be able to heal them in this space. And if not, inshallah, in a better gathering, in a better space, and in a better world to come in the life to come. Inshallah. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.